Hi, I'm Andrew Holdsworth, Vice President of the Real World Performance Team here at Oracle. And today, we thought we'd get out of the office and to one of my favorite locations on a beautiful spring day down here on the city front in San Francisco. But let's just talk a little bit about real world performance. Now, I've been doing real world performance now at Oracle for nearly 27 years. And I really learned quite a few things about people's philosophy and approach to performance that yields good performance. I've also seen the other side of the coin and I spend a lot of time coaching and hoping that people will actually start listening and making the right decisions earlier. My favorite sport being sailing, and we're going to do more of that later, uh, we're going to actually talk about what it takes to win a race. Now a performance project on your database is just like a sailboat race. It's all won before you even cross the line. It's all about preparation, practicing, equipment selection. All these things are so important to win races that basically we have to put the preparation in and the hard work. So one of the points I'd like to make about real world performance is you don't accidentally stumble on to world class performance on your database. It takes hard work. Maybe you don't like to hear that, but it really does take hard work and attention to detail and a certain passion inside of you to make things go really well. The next issue I really like to talk about is that in many cases, people don't realize they have a performance problem right up to the last minute, i.e. the time when they roll systems out into production. And this is like me attacking the start line in a sailboat that I've never raced together, with a crew I've never raced together, I don't even know the course, and I have no idea what the weather is. So basically, we tend to find that people get the systems they deserve. It really measures the amount of preparation they've done. And the last thing we really have to deal with is a culture of good enough. In many cases at work, we're not actually dealing with trying to win races, we're just trying to be good enough. Now this culture of good enough is basically one of our biggest challenges because it's a non-engineering metric, it's very much a perception thing. It's a bit like winning ice skating competitions, you have to please the judges i.e. your boss or your customers. Well, in sailboat racing, we have to win the race. We have to come across the line in front of everybody else. And so we need to be working at the point that we're getting the best out of the crew, the best out of the sailboat, we're reading the weather the best, and we're winning the races. And this is different. So really, real world performance is about maximizing your investment in Oracle software and hardware. It's not about appearing to be good enough. It's actually measuring and recording excellence. Perhaps we've got the best metaphor behind me. Um, real world performance is all about bridging your potential performance and actually delivering it in reality. In many cases, in so many systems, we see people have got all the ingredients. They've got reasonably well-written applications. They have the best software. They have the best hardware, but they're not quite delivering on the performance. And these are the performance engineering aspects. So it's more a case of taking what is potentially good enough and meeting its ultimate performance. It's bridging that gap. Many people ask about the real world performance methods and techniques that we adopt and uh, they're remarkably simple and uh, we'll just use the boat uh, as a very simple analogy. And the first thing that we always make sure uh, when we're doing real world performance projects is to make sure that we use the equipment in the manner that it was designed to be used. So you can see that I've rigged my boat here in the manner it's to be designed to be used. We wouldn't try and put the rudder in the centerboard slot or put the centerboard on the rudder. We basically use the equipment as it's set up and designed to be used. There isn't anything here that's not being used in the manner that it was designed to be used. And that's one of the first points to be made about real world performance. The next thing is in real world performance is we really are a data driven approach to how we do our sport or database performance for us. Now, we take inputs of data while we're going sailing. So I have a wind indicator to tell me where the wind is coming from. Likewise, I have telltales on the sail to tell me if the sail is stalling, whether I've trimmed the sails correctly or not. Now, with this in mind, we also do the same with our database. We gather AWR data, we gather SQL monitor data to tell us 
where we're spending the time inside the database, where a SQL statement is spending its time, to give us the truth as to what is going on, and we're not guessing at what is going on, so we can do good performance analysis. There's only really, truly, three real-world performance problems. And let's, again, we'll use the analogy of the boat to describe it. And the first thing is, we're just not using the product correctly. We're not using it as it was designed. I've rigged the boat in front of you as it was designed to be used. If you're not doing that, you're at a disadvantage from the beginning. We're not going to win that race because our equipment is not set up to win. The second issue is that in many cases that we suffer in real world performances, the application code has just been inappropriately designed for the actual performance that it's trying to achieve. And perhaps we can use this uh, simple analogy that uh, here we have a piece of the boat where we have to actually apply a lot of tension. Okay? Now if I only use one piece of rope, you can see I'm not able to apply much tension. But if I actually start using mechanical advantage, I can actually achieve a lot of advantage. And you can see how much I've bent that mast as a result of pulling that on. And we will have to do that while sailing. But the key point is, with just a single piece of rope, I'd have never achieved that advantage. We see this today in database performance because people are writing row by row programs rather than using set based techniques. So if you can go with that idea, a single pulley versus multiple pulleys, the multiple pulleys give you more advantage. And the third item of real world performance is that we occasionally actually see problems inside the database, and in which, in which case, we fix them. Uh, just like if I damage my boat because I have a collision or something, I fix it. It's as simple as that. Now, however, people's perception of why they have poor performance on the system is that it's always a component or a data, usually a database problem. 99% of people believe that they have a database problem. However, if you actually get down and do real world performance, you usually find it's one of those two issues. They weren't using the product properly or their application code wasn't specific. Now, this sort of boat is called a laser and we actually race these and the, all the boats are identical. So with all the boats identical, the only thing that is variable is the sailor. However, it's even funny in the laser racing where all the boats are identical, the people at the back of the fleet are always blaming their equipment. Whereas the people at the front of the fleet put their success down to hard work and preparation. This isn't an accident. Additional things that the real world performance team does is we spend a lot of time training and teaching people. And you may have attended one of our real world training classes or watched one of our videos online showing you real world performance in action. Coaching and education is an important part. If people aren't mentored into doing it right, they won't do it right. It's as simple as that. And the last thing that real world performers do is we're really trying to avoid doing performance by guesswork, hacking, bit flipping, trying and seeing. We actually want to know that we understand how the product's working, how the hardware's working, and make sure that they're running properly. This is the key to really good performance. If you're executing with the equipment as designed, you have a good chance. And you can see when I go sailing, if I use the equipment properly, and I've rigged the equipment properly, there's a fair chance when I line up on that start line, I'm in the game with a chance of winning that race.